Charlie Lyon Church of God of Prophecy. Um, in addition to this morning, uh, we'd like to welcome you. And uh, for those of you that are here, those of you that might be watching uh, live on Facebook, we welcome you this morning. Um, we would like to make an ask if you weren't already aware. Uh, we are doing two services at the, right now. We're doing uh, one service at 9, a drive-in service at 9 a.m. Uh, for those of you who would prefer, um, just kind of be doing your own thing there in, the, in, your, in your vehicle. Um, and we'll continue to do that service at 9 a.m. Uh, we'll have the, uh, the speakers and everything set up and uh, do the radio thing. And then we'll run and we'll have our in, indoor service at 1045. I um, just want to encourage you with taking a, a precaution the best we can as far as distancing. If you feel comfortable wearing a mask, you want to wear a mask, that's fine, obviously. Um, but we are again uh, kind of having trying to have the family units be you know, separate and we'll do the social distancing thing. Uh, everything we can do uh, for safety's sake. But we're just uh, glad, praise the Lord, to be able to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We know, we understand that this is just a, merely a building, but it is the, uh, it, it's what it represents to us as being able to worship, uh, worship and praise the Lord. Amen. I've got a uh, verse I'd like to read to you this morning. Uh, out of Philippians chapter 3. It's just a single verse, and you may or may not uh, be familiar with it. It's not one of the quote unquote famous ones. But uh, in Philippians 3, cha uh, chapter 3, verse 10, it says, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. And when I read that, the thing that hopped out in my mind was it says that I may know him. And there's different, when you look at this context, the word know is one of those words that can kind of have different levels and different layers. Because there are many people that we know who Jesus is. But do we know Jesus? That's it. Um, in the reference of this scripture, that I may know Him doesn't simply mean I know who He is. It means do I have a relationship Praise with Lord. Jesus? Lord. Do I have a relationship with His resurrection? The knowledge of His resurrection. Do I have a relationship with knowing the sufferings that He went through for me or for us? And that's the context of that scripture. Not just knowing who he is, but knowing him in the terms of a relationship. If, uh, if you are not, if you know Jesus, but you don't know that you have a relationship with him, I encourage you that today might be the day Thank you, Jesus. that uh, we, we can handle that. Um, before I, I, it kind of made me think of a, and this is a true story, and I'll get to the a couple, we got a couple of, uh, announcements to make, but this was a little something that happened when I was reading this and talking about knowing him. Uh, it, it reminded me of this years ago. I remember, I don't remember where I was at. I was some, in some city somewhere and I was walking down the sidewalk and uh, and I looked up the distance of the sidewalk and I saw this lady and she was waiting. Well, I, I, you know, I don't have the best eyesight in the world. Um, so I wasn't sure who it was, but you know, you don't want to offend anybody, especially if it turns out you, know, you, you do know or whatever. So I waved back. And she started, you know, making her way toward me. And I just happened to be going that way. And she's still steady waiting. So I'm waving back. <laughs> and then we're, we're, getting, we're getting closer. I'm trying to formulate in my mind, so I still don't recognize her. I'm trying to formulate in my mind how I'm going to approach this. Do I just pretend that I know who she uh, is? <laughs> or do I say, I'm sorry, I don't know who, but she's still waving, I'm still waving. And uh, so then I get pretty kind of close, you know, and at this point, I have no idea who this person is. <laughs> and I kind of feel bad that I don't know who this person is, because she's just really happy and, and really waving. And 
And we just get closer and closer, and I'm freaking out. What am I going to say? And she walked right by me, and the person that was behind me. Gave her up. And so, man, I can't get on up the sidewalk any faster. I'm telling you, uh, that was pretty embarrassing. But uh, at some point, maybe I thought I knew that person, but as time got shorter, I had no idea who that person was. That's good. And you may think you know Jesus, but folks, time is getting shorter. So we need to make sure that we know Jesus. Amen? Amen. We've got a couple of announcements this morning. Um, tomorrow will be the, the deadline for the back to school supplies that we're uh, accepting uh, in coordination with. Fairway, we're teaming up with Fairway Baptist Church. With, with Fairway Baptist Church, if you can turn that stuff in tomorrow, is the, the deadline for the turn in. Uh, you know, was it books and pencils and pens and Yeah, no books, pencils and pens. We got all the shoes and the book bags on. They're already coming, so just school supplies, uh, you know. And um, anybody wants to help, tell us. Yeah, yeah. And anybody that wants to help, um, ne uh, next Saturday, uh, we'll be going to Fairway Baptist to distribute those to uh, the youth and the parents of the youth so they can get their uh, not quite back to school supplies. Uh, they can get their stay at home and learn supplies. But uh, we just trust that at some point we'll get past this, we'll get back to some kind of normal. But there are still folks there that don't have uh, learning supplies that they need, whether they're learning at home or whether they're learning in school. Uh, so we encourage you. To do that again Saturday, if you want to help, uh, you meet here. Uh, yeah, give me a call or get the me. If you want to go? We'll set up the time. We're gonna starts at eight thirty uh, this Saturday. Okay. All right. And uh, there's one other thing you told me I forgot. The prayer meeting Thursday, right? Yeah, having a prayer meeting Thursday night, seven p.m. here, uh, outdoor, and uh, we encourage you to take part in that and. Uh, we are in desperate need of prayer. Uh, a lot of things going on. You've seen the, the answer to prayer back behind us here. And uh, things are going well there. So just continue to pray for, pray for that. Continue to pray for those folks among us that may not be feeling well. And, uh, and just pray for uh, those conversions that we so desperately need because time is getting short. Amen. I have a, an announcement. <laughs> For the ones of you guys that have prayed and asked me all these nine months, we have been to church and we need to be Well, the time is here almost, the first week in August. Just pray that it ain't the day that my, my grandmother is going to be born. She's due the third, you know. And I don't know, I just had to say this yes, because he didn't. I don't know when I was in the third, she is. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know when I would have been able to get it. So I said, yes, the first week in August. So I don't know exactly when it was done yet. But y'all know. Thank you, Lord, for uh, allowing us to gather once again back in your house. And Father, we ask you to bless it, to multiply the offering. We ask you to uh, anoint it, use it for your glory. Multiply in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Get ready to get real special with the uh, the items. Now we're getting ready to start giving out 
Uh, it won't be a piece of candy. It'll be better than a piece of candy. I promise you that. No birthdays. No. Oh yeah. It should be. It should be. Anybody that had a birthday from March on. Man, I don't know if I got enough. I don't know if I got enough cards up here for that. Hey. Uh, yeah. Right. What we got? We're giving out right now for birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, we're giving out uh, Chick Fil A cards. And uh, and so it doesn't get any better. Most people, most people like Chick Fil A. You can't go wrong on Chick Fil A. So anybody? Hey, man, it's, hey, when I say Chick Fil A, man, there's a whole lot of people got birthdays now, man. Man, it's birthdays all over the place now. Praise God. Spectacular. I think we ought to give God praise and glory. Uh, 
And I heard the voice of the Lord, and I was wondering why in the world was it, be, was, it was it this season of life that this was going up? And I heard the reassuring voice of the Lord saying, He's putting it up right now to give people hope in a season of discouragement. He's giving people hope in a season of trouble. He's giving people something to look forward to in a season that you've never seen before. And uh, everyone's been praying. And i got something else to shout about. Up to this point right now, I think we ought to give God praise and glory because this church is debt free. Somebody ought to say, Lord, 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 Lord. praying and asking the Lord. Uh, I was on a prayer walk, praying on the way to this church for God to provide. And when I got to the church parking lot, somebody put $4,000 in my hands for the scholarship hall. And yesterday, I got work. Somebody that doesn't even go to this church put another $1,000 on it. Let me tell you something. Prayer works down in front of us. And so if my people will pray, let me tell you something, prayer works. And let me tell you something, when this thing goes up, can nobody in here take credit for it? Can nobody say that they're the ones that did it? God Almighty did it. And I think we ought to give God praise and thank the Lord for what He's doing, for what He's done. He's the mighty God. And I just want to tell you this morning, if you come up against opposition, if you come up against challenges, if you come up against heartaches, if you come up against discouragement and depression, just know that God is able. Hallelujah. And I want to pray for this service. I want to pray for the worship team. Pray for the preaching of this word. Of the word. And let's ask God just to move. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for all that you have done. All that you are doing, Jesus. Father, we're thankful, Lord, as David said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I pray, Lord, you would give us a hunger and a desire to worship you and to praise you, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray for the worship today, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to move in a mighty way, Lord. I pray that your spirit would fill this place today, Jesus. I pray that there be anybody lost without you, that today would be the day of salvation, Lord. Father, I pray you would give my voice the strength I need to preach a uh, message again, Lord Jesus. Give my voice uh, what I need to get through the message, Father. Anoint me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's children said, amen. amen. And amen. And there's something I want to encourage you with. You were created to worship the Lord. You were made by the hands of God to praise Him. And if you decide not to sing if you decide not to worship the Lord, did you know that's a voice that will be missing? Because nobody else, look at your neighbor and say, can nobody else sing like you? Say, don't nobody else sound like you? And so if you don't sing and you don't worship, that's one voice that can nobody else offer praise to. So that will be a voice on the earth. That will be missing that God wants to hear in the throne room of heaven. And so I'm going to encourage you, worship the Lord with your whole heart. I'm going to ask everyone to stand and let us worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
hands of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. goodness of God. I just really love the song. It just really ministered to my heart. It says, I love you, Lord. Your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing the goodness of God. And that should be truly our heart to sing the goodness of God with every breath that we have. Oh 
of Jesus. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. He is mighty. He is powerful. He is precious. He's on the throne this morning. I'm so glad my, our Jesus, He's still on the throne this morning. Is He not, church? Amen. He's still in control this morning. Hallelujah. People think they're in control. They're not in control. God is in control. People think they got it figured out. They don't have it figured out. God's got it figured out. People think they know it all. They don't know it all. God knows it all. We serve God who knows it all. Hallelujah. He knows everything. Hallelujah. I'm glad we serve a God who knows it all. I'm so glad our God is in control today. I'm so glad our future is in the hands of an almighty God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we ask for a blessing. Over this message today, Lord, we pray for an anointing. Father, for a fresh outpouring of your spirit. I pray, Lord, you would bless hearts today. I pray that your spirit would flow in a mighty way. Speak in a mighty way. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen. And amen. The title of the message this morning is Ready or Not? Here I come. Look at your neighbor and say, Ready or Not? Jesus is coming. Jesus Christ is coming. And the rapture of the church of Christians is going to happen unexpectedly. It's going to happen all of a sudden. The other day I was walking. I, I started out on a little mission to, to walk. And uh, I've been enjoying some, some good walks. And I walk the edge of the road until a car comes. And then I get off the road. Well, the other day, as I was walking down the road and a car came, I stepped off the road and I stepped into a hole. And when I stepped into the hole, I fell over on the ground. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. But, you know, it happened all of the boots. It happened unexpectedly. It happened just like that. It happened. And the return of Jesus... The rapture of the church of Christians is going to be a lot like that hole I stepped in. It's going to happen all of a sudden. Boom! The Bible says in the twinkling of an eye, the rapture is going to happen. It's going to happen unexpected. Jesus is about to gather those that are ready. Saints of God, we're going home soon. How many are looking forward to that home going? Hallelujah. We head home, church. We head home. It's, it's about that time. And while Jesus, when Jesus comes, how many are excited that when Jesus Christ comes, he won't be wearing a mask. He won't be wearing no gloves. He won't be practicing any social distancing. He won't be six foot apart. How many are looking forward to when Jesus comes? Today, hallelujah. I'm so glad Jesus Christ is still for us and not against us. There won't be a chain shortage in heaven. Why? Because there's going to be streets of gold. Hallelujah. How many are looking forward to those streets of gold? No governor on earth, no governor in the nations will be able to shut heaven down. Hallelujah. They may have shut the church down, but I'm here to take care of no governor on this earth. Shut heaven down. Hallelujah. I'm so glad of that, church. I'm looking forward to it. But church, I've got something I want to share from the depths of my heart this morning. And if it ever was a, a message that I really want you to listen to, I want you to listen now. I don't believe we have much time. I don't believe we have much time. According to the word of God, time is running out. And I don't want to see you left behind. If you don't know Christ, you will be left behind. You will be left behind. About a few months back, the Spirit of the Lord woke me up. It was the clearest that I can recall the Lord ever speaking to me in my life. At about 5 a.m. in the morning, I heard the voice of the Lord say, I come quickly. Jesus is coming, church. He's coming. I told my wife, I said, honey, 
The Lord just spoke to me. He's coming quickly. And the word quickly there means suddenly. It's going to happen like I stepped in that hole unexpected. The rapture is going to happen unexpected. According to the word of God, what you are seeing today, it won't be long. And after the church is raptured up out of here, after the Christians leave up out of here and we go with Jesus, some of you say, well, how do you know that can take place? Well, let me tell you something, because the word of God says so. You know there's already been a rapture before, and I don't know many saints, but Enoch, what happened to Enoch? He didn't die. He was, boom, raptured up into heaven. How about uh, Elijah? What happened to Elijah? Boom, he was raptured up into heaven. The next time it ain't going to be just one soul, it's going to be many souls that are going to be raptured into heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You don't want to miss that rapture. Because when we leave out of here, church, we're going to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's going to be seven years of the greatest get-together that you could ever imagine. We're going to be with Jesus Christ for seven years. We're going to be eating. We're going to be having a good time. We're going to be in fellowship with other Christian believers. And we're going to get a chance to spend time with Jesus for seven years while this earth goes through a tribulation period that you don't want to be left behind to see. It's going to be three and a half years of tribulation and then three and a half years of the great tribulation. And it's going to be the worst thing what you see on the news today is not even a drop in the bucket of what is coming to this earth. It's going to be the worst thing you could ever imagine. Hatred and bitterness and disease that will kill billions. It's going to be a time you don't want to go. You don't want to be left behind, saints of God. You want to go to that seven year marriage supper of the Lamb. In Revelation 19 and verse 6 through 9, it talks about this marriage supper of the Lamb that will be at for seven years. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. This is talking about Jesus. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. That wife is talking about believers, Christians. We are the bride. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fire, fire and linen, clean and white, for the fire and linen and the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are true saints of God. Do you have? You'll look at your neighbor and say, Do you have your wedding garments on? <laughs> have you sent your RSVP? How many of you have seen an RSVP when somebody sends you an invitation? Hey, the invitation is here today, and you've been you've been asked to come, but you got to send your RSVP in, and you got to put your wedding garments in to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. 1948, Israel became a nation. That generation will see the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That means somebody, minimum. 73 years of age or older will, not might, but will see the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Psalms 102 verse 13 says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. Zion is Jerusalem. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Isaiah 66 8 says, Who hath heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. If you don't know Christ today, you don't want to fly with a Christian pilot. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't want to fly with a Christian pilot if you don't know Jesus. Because that Christian pilot during the rapture is going up and you're coming back down. You don't want to fly with a Christian pilot. How many are looking forward to that day that the rapture takes place? Dirty dishes are going to be left behind. Laundry's going to be piled high. The chores will not get finished. It's going
hot days, fear and worries, anxieties at times, good days, bad days. You would face liars, predators, cheaters, sickness, disease, lies, tigers, surprises. Oh yeah, and those dogs that try to bite you when you're walking. Y'all pray for me. I got a dog that's trying to bite me every single time I go out of the house. And Y'all pray for me that I don't get bit. But anyways, through it all, the map that you allow, that you follow, would eventually lead you home. God's roadmap, God's truth of His Word will lead you home if you will dust it off, open it, read it, and follow it. In this life, you will face a lot of things I just talked about. But God will lead us, direct us, and be with us through them all. How many is glad God is with you through it all? Hallelujah. He's with you through it all. True story about a woman by the name of Diane Nyad. She was a young girl, nine years old. And she stood on the shores of Florida. And she looked out across the ocean and she asked her mother, she said, Mother, what's over there? She said, Honey, it's, it's Cuba. You can almost swim there. Well, little, this little nine-year-old girl, she, 20 or 30 years later, she sat out and she attempted to swim from Cuba to Florida. She was faced with some type of sickness and the trip got cut short. Another time she got bit or stung by something in the ocean. Another time the winds came and it blew her off track and she couldn't make it. She tried it a fourth time. Something happened. But on her fifth time, on her fifth time, she set out and she made it from Cuba to Florida in the ocean. And when she arrived on shore, she became the first person in the history to swim that 120-mile trip. And when the girl arrived on the shore, she could barely talk. She was in bad shape. She said a few words. And one thing she said is, never give up. Never give up. Two, you're never too old. Three, this team of 35 people, they went along with me. If it was not for them, those doctors and these meteorologists, etc., I would have never made it. How many know that's why the body of Christ is so important? Let me tell you something. We're going to face some dangers and some cold days and hard days and troublesome days. But aren't you glad for the body of Christ, the church, that to never give up and keep pressing in? And when one of the body of Christ and the members falls down, isn't it good to know you've got somebody that's praying for you? Hallelujah. You've got somebody that's lifting you up. Hallelujah. You've got somebody that's saying, you can do it. You can do it. Keep pressing on. The rapture's coming. Don't give up now. Hallelujah. So that's the, the Lord that we serve. And so in this life, leading to the rapture, on the way to Jesus taking us from this place, we're going to face some landmines, dead end roads, potholes, some breakdowns. But I've talked to you lately about a service station named Jesus. Aren't you glad he's open 24-7? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad he never closes down? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad he's always on time? Hallelujah. Jesus is available right now. Hallelujah. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of fear, he is that road map. But in verse 5 of Matthew 24, it says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall look at your neighbor. Deceive many. Tell the neighbor next to you. Deceive many. Many will be deceived in this last day we're living in. Many will be comfortable in this last day we're living in. Many will drop out of the race. In this day we live in. I believe we're going to see a lot of new converts. I believe a lot of new people. But I'm afraid to say. I'm afraid that some are going to turn a little lukewarm. And some that once was walking with the Lord. You've already seen it drop out of the race. Some of you know people that was on fire for the Lord at one time, don't you? But they no longer serve Jesus Christ. How many want to see that fire rekindled? That, that, that lukewarm state set on fire. The coal set back on fire. Hallelujah. For the kingdom of God. And so Christians, we have a lot to look forward to. 
Many today trust someone on the news being led by Satan more than they believe the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Many faith leaders today are rising up calling their way the way, being led by Satan. Jesus warned us that he said what? This would happen. At the end of times, you can look to see it all around us. Many don't believe the rapture is coming. Church, you're being warned today. Don't be deceived. In Matthew chapter 24, 37 through 39, it said, But as of the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, they were before the flood, eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall coming of the Son of Man be. Noah preached for over a hundred years that the rain was coming, and many did not what? Believe it. Only about eight people made it on that boat. Noah preached for over a hundred years. He had a real short message. It was about three words. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. But nobody believed it. But Jesus clearly told us, just as people didn't believe the flood was coming, people will not believe that my rapture is coming. And so we must get ready. It's going to happen. Boom. Unexpected. The other day, I had to go pick my daughter Alyssa up. She spent the night with a friend uh, at Smith Mountain Lake. And as I went to Smith Mountain Lake to get her the other evening, they were out on the boat. And I was walking down their sidewalk to the lake. And as I was walking down that sidewalk to the lake, what looked like a real snake was right there laying in the middle of the sidewalk. And when I looked down, I jumped over real quick like that. How many of you ever had that happen before something scared you? And then you looked around to make sure that nobody see what was going on. <laughs> I told the lab, the owners when they come back, I said, if you got video cameras, y'all gonna get a good laugh then. I said, because that snake right there, they said they keep that snake there to keep the, the geese or something off of their property. But anyways, I was glad when I knew it wasn't real when I found out. But just as unexpected, boom, then that snake starts on me. It's going to be, boom, at that moment of the twinkle of an eye that the rapture of Christians is going to take place. And so, church, I encourage you right now, learn and know the truth so you don't believe people's false ideas and false reports. The reason many are being deceived today, you know why the streets are in chaos right now? Because they don't know the truth. They, they simply don't know the truth. John 8, 32 says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth. And that's what people need to hear today. They need to hear the truth from us, from the church, out of love. Believers telling others that, uh, that the, the end is coming near. And so we must prepare ourselves. Listen to the voice of the Lord when he speaks. The Lord is saving people right now. The Spirit of the Lord is moving. People are getting saved. I, I got a chance to lead several to Christ lately. The, the Lord is moving. I saw a true story the other day of a, 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 a he used to be a drug addict. He was a drug addict. He turned to joining a gang. He became a gang leader. True story. And he almost overdosed and died several times. Somebody kept inviting him to church. Kept inviting him to church. Kept inviting him to church. Finally, the man went to church. He gave his heart to Jesus Christ. He now he started off helping that drug rehabilitation program. And now he's been pastoring in Richmond for many, many years. And I forgot how many different nationalities they said comes to that church. How many are glad the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is still moving? He's still saving souls today. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we don't want to be left behind. You don't want to be left behind. Verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. After the rapture, it's going to be a famine and, and pestilence so bad that you don't want to be a part of what's going to be here left behind. 
Luke 21, 36, I'm going to tell you the reason why I believe we're going to get out of here before it gets real bad. Luke 21, 36 says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all. Look at your neighbor and say, escape all. These things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. After the rapture, one third of the earth's population is going to be killed by disease and famine. Billions of people are going to die simply because of this COVID. It was nothing compared to what's getting ready to come, church, after the rapture of believers. And so you don't want to be left behind. Jesus is coming. Some plan for retirement, but they don't plan for eternity. There will be much sorrow during the seven-year tribulation. The first three and a half years will be the regular tribulation period. And then the last three and a half years will be called the great tribulation. The last three and a half years is going to be the, the toughest time that this earth has ever seen. But in the meantime, while tribulation is going on on this earth, I'm going to be at the very supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to be enjoying my time with Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to see those nail print hands. Those star print hands. I'm going to get to look upon my Lord and Savior. The one that died for us. Hallelujah. And in the meantime, I think people down here on earth think they got it all figured out in those eight or nine armies. Those eight or nine countries begin to surround Jerusalem to try to wipe it off the face of the planet. That's when the seven year marriage supper of the land is going to be over. And that's when Jesus is coming back to conquer this place. And he's going to rule and we're going to rule and reign with Jesus for a thousand years. The Bible says the lion will lay down with the lamb. Hallelujah. I'm really looking forward to that day. Hallelujah. forever in heaven. Hallelujah. And so, right now they've already got chips that they're implanting in people's arms and hands in places of the world right now. I believe the mark of the beast is already being set up. I believe it's already here. So we must get ready. We must prepare ourselves. We must be prepared to see Jesus Christ. We don't want to be left behind. We must accept Jesus right now while the Spirit of the Lord is moving. I want you to listen very closely to Daniel chapter 12, 1 through 4. Very, very powerful words here about the end of the times. And at the time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of my people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, the people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they can turn many to righteous as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, Shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. To and fro. How many seen the highways lately? How many seen the highways lately? What's going on on these highways? People are doing what? Running to and fro. In the last days, the Bible said that knowledge shall be what? Increased. People rode horse and buggies and camels and all other kind of animals for what? 6,000 years. And now all of a sudden the knowledge has increased and people are riding in what? Cars, airplanes, you got refrigerators that can tell you when your milk is out. You got cell phones that can understand English. You've got electricity. And so 6,000 years, people had none of this. But the Bible says in the last days, knowledge shall be increased. We've seen that right. How many would agree knowledge has been increased over the last few years? 
And so we must prepare ourselves. Jesus is coming, church. And I want you to know right now, we serve a Jesus that loves you. Kevin, you can come and play a song, please. We serve a Jesus that has a place prepared for you, church. Jesus Christ died on that old rugged cross for you. And if you're not rapture ready when this music plays, I'm going to ask you to come to this altar. I'm going to ask you to come to the front. Because at any moment, everything has already been prophesied and has been fulfilled. All we're waiting on now is the rapture of the church. The Bible says that the gospel shall be preached to the ends of the earth. And then he had shut up. Well, guess what? On this lockdown and quarantine and this COVID, guess what we got right now? Facebook Live. We've got the gospel right now being preached to the ends of the earth right now. And I know we didn't like this lockdown, but if it wasn't for this lockdown, there's a lot of people that would have never heard the gospel all over the, all over the world. Right now, the gospel through media is being preached to the ends of the earth. And so Jesus in the Word says the gospel shall be preached to the ends of the earth. Right now it's already been fulfilled. And then shall the end come. Later on down in verse 13 or 14 it says, He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And so as we bow our heads, I'm going to ask you right now to come to this altar. If you have anything you want to pray about, I'm going to ask you to come right now. If there be anything that you want to pray about, come to this altar. Jesus Christ wants you to meet Him right now at this altar. He's got a great plan for you.